All right, looks like the stream of people signing on has slowed down. Okay. Well, wonderful. Good morning, everyone. Um, we'll, we'll probably get started here. Uh, maybe I'll just mention a few things. We'll give a moment or so in case someone's, uh, you know, running a bit late. But first, we are glad to have you here. Thanks for coming. Um, we know that there's a lot going on. And um, if you feel for whatever need that it would be better for you to, to step away, uh, depending on where you live or what's going on, that's totally fine. This is gonna be recorded. The point of today is to kind of give everyone an overview of what camp is gonna be like, to kind of see how we'll interact when we're online with each other. And then also um, to answer any questions that, that people may have. So if we could um, kind of go on to the overview, um, slide Rebecca what we want to do is give a big picture for what's going to happen today we're going to introduce ourselves we're going to talk a little bit about the rules for the day for how we interact um, we're going to tell you what's going to happen in the camp itself we are going to go over um, what students want out of the camp something that's unique about this is that uh, you can go to a lot of camps and they say we're doing this on this day this on this day this on this day um, and we have a big picture of what we're going to do, but we can tailor it to meet uh, every student's needs if we have to. Um, we're going to show you a little bit of a sample. We have some students who are coming in um, who are actually going to nationals this year and we'll speak on some things so you kind of get a feel for that. We'll kind of do an interactive activity um, to practice the format and then we'll answer any questions that you have and, and take off for the day. So. I'd uh, like to tell you a little bit about myself. Uh, my name is Ross Eichley. I have been coaching for a long time now. I'm a teacher librarian at Egan High School where I coach speech and I coach congressional debate. Um, I've been here for five years. Um, before that, I, I taught for about um, 12 years at, at various other places. I'm a teacher librarian here. I have two children of my own. My oldest just finished his first year of college and my youngest is just finishing sixth grade. Um, I have a dog, a Great Dane named Stella, and we have a cat named Dante. So that's just a little bit about myself. Um, I don't know if you want to mention a little bit about yourself, Rebecca. Sure, my name is Rebecca Freilich and I work for the Minnesota Urban Debate League, which is the program that runs this camp. And I also used to participate in speech and debate in college at the University of South Dakota. And then I moved here to Minneapolis and began coaching first at Eastview High School and then uh, assistant coaching at the University of Minnesota. And some of the things that I've been doing during the quarantine are bird watching at a park near my house, crocheting, and watching a lot of cooking videos, but not doing that much cooking. <laughs> Very cool. If we could, um, before we move on to, to the ground rules for today, would it be okay if everyone says hi so we can see a name and a face and hear how to pronounce your name? Because that's pretty important to me. So, um, as, as I look at the screen, um, uh, someone named Sean, it looks like, S-H-A-N, hi there. I hope I said that right. If you would uh, introduce yourself, tell us your name, uh, maybe where you're from, and then we'll just kind of keep going down the list, uh, you know. Uh, yeah, okay. Um, my name is Sean, and I'm from Houston, Texas. Welcome. That's a long commute. <laughs> We're glad to have you. Thanks, John. Um, as I see the list, um, Sophie, a student of mine, is here. Do you want to say hi and just to everyone? She's a student at Egan High School who's um, volunteering to give us a speech, so thank you. Hi, Sophie. Hi. Yep, my name is Sophie. Um, I'm in ninth grade, and I'm a novice in debate, so I've done about one year now of congressional debate. Mm -hmm. And she... Uh, made it to nationals, so that's quite uh, phenomenal. So you'll get a, a good speech from her. Grace, as I see the screen, is right under her. Grace is also a student from Egan High School. Do you want to say hi, Grace? Hi, I'm Grace. I'm also one of Ross's students, as he said. I'm in my fourth year of congressional debate this year, so it's been a while. Um, and like Sophie, I will be doing the nap this year. Yep, this will be Grace's second time at Nationals, and she took third place at State this year, so we'll probably get a great speech from her as well. 
Um, and then as I am looking at the screen, it appears like um, Amy Sandgren is the next person. Uh, hi, that's my mom's name. I'm Simon. Simon. I'm seventh okay. grade and I'm, and I'm from New York. Well, welcome. We're, we're glad to have you. Thanks for being here. Um, N. Lu is the next person I see, or that's the next screen. I don't know who the student is. If you could say hi or... Hi, this is Na. Sorry. Um, Na, okay. I'm the parent of a middle schooler, not middle school, next year, uh, middle schooler to be, uh, Daniel Chen's mom. Okay. Wonderful. I'm just to take notes for him. Excellent. Well, thanks. Thanks for being here, Nah. Thanks for being here. Oh, thank you. Um, Leonidas, Leonidas Coleman is the next screen that I see. Hi, I'm Leonidas. Leonidas. Okay. I'm sorry I said that wrong. I'm finishing sixth grade, and this is my first year of Congress debate camp. Wonderful. Wonderful. Very cool. Um, after that, I see a James C. Um, my name is James C. and I live in Edina. This is my first year of congressional debate. Very cool. And Very I just cool. finished sixth grade. Okay. Well, welcome. I'm glad to have you. I'm glad to have you. After James, I see uh, Minakshi. I'm sorry if I said that wrong. Oh, hey, you got it right. Uh, this is Ilan uh, Minakshi's mean, dad. Okay. So she's a raising sixth grader. Uh, so she currently has a conflict. She's sitting in another class. So I'm kind of sitting in for her. So we are from Eden Prairie, Minnesota. Okay. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you. After Minakshi, I see, is it Prairie or Priti? Hi, yes. This is uh, Priti. I'm a parent uh, of a rising seventh grader, and I uh, have no clue as to what. Uh, Congress versus policy debated, so I'm just here to learn. Thank okay. You. Yep, wonderful. We'll give you a good overview. You'll, you'll get a good idea of it after today, so thank you. Um, after, after Preeti, I see Jazzy. Is that the name? Jazzy Janai. Hi, my name is Janie, and I'm a fifth grader. And I'm from Minnesota. All right. Well, welcome, Jamie. Welcome. And then after that, I don't see a name. I see a phone number. Um, so I don't, I don't know who that person is. But if you're able to introduce yourself, that would be awesome. And then we have uh, another new person signing on to. Oh, cool, cool. Audio. Well, let's welcome them in. Hello. Hi there, my name is Ross. To anyone who hasn't introduced themselves yet, if you'd be willing to say hi, um, I want to make sure I can pronounce your name right, and then uh, we'll go over some ground rules and go from there. So, okay. Okay. Well, maybe the audio isn't working. Um, well, let's let's just go over a couple of ground rules so that we're all kind of on the same page for how. The, the rest of the ses session will work. Um, I'm uncertain how many of you are or aren't familiar with Zoom. Um, there are a lot of different options, but for, for today, if you have a question, if you want, just visually raise your hand in case you don't know how all of the options work, and we'll, we'll try and answer it at any time. We want people to participate, to interact. We want you to get a feel for, for what Congress is like. We want you to learn something new, and uh, if you participate and interact, you're going to help other people uh, learn something new. And if we can, let's try um, to avoid the, the chat option for now. Um, I don't want to miss anyone's comments. And even though Rebecca is an outstanding tech person and she'll kind of keep an eye on things to help, we don't want to miss anyone's feedback or comments or, or anything like that. So if I, I could, I'll give you a, a big overview of the camp, the big picture of that. And um, for those who are unfamiliar of what Congress is like, screen. okay, for, for, um, 
For those who are uncertain what Congress is like, in congressional debate, students act like legislators, like uh, representatives or senators, and they get to write their own legislation, their own bills that they debate, why they should or shouldn't be passed, what's good about them, how it could help society and help people, or what is potentially harmful if that legislation is enacted. So some things that are unique about Congress is that the students get to write what it is that they are debating. In every other format of debate, you are given the topic and you are assigned a side, but in congressional debate, you get to A, write the legislation, you get to choose what you speak on, and um, you get to choose what side you're on of it. So while we're at camp, the overall goal is no matter who is coming, everyone is going to leave a better debater. And we're gonna do that by working on polishing everyone's speaking skills. We have uh, practices, we have um, drills, we have a whole bunch of exercises that we can do to help everyone become a better speaker. Another part about debate is that people become better researchers and writers. So when camp is over, your student is going to leave or you're going to leave as a better writer and a better researcher. You're gonna feel much more confident about it and much more comfortable with it. And then the other thing about, poli about congressional debate that is wonderful is that it helps you polish your organizational communication skills. You're gonna learn how to preside over a group of people. You're going to learn how to lead small groups of people, and you'll even learn how to lead larger groups of people. So overall, um, congressional debate is a, a great way to enhance your academic standing in any class. So when you leave, whether you debate the rest of your life or never again, you're going to become a better debater. Um, and to that end, we want to show you a little bit of, of debate in just a moment, but once you've kind of heard the overview now, uh, anyone who wants can kind of share what it is that they're hoping to get out of, of camp. I'm going to take notes about any specific things that people have. So if you want to ask something, go ahead. Why yeah. don't you raise your hand? Okay, I hear a voice. Go ahead. Okay. Sarah, do you have something? Oh. And if, if you're uncertain right now, that's okay too. Why don't we um, give a couple examples? So we, we have a couple of students here, some students that I work with who are going to nationals this year. And they, in addition to doing schoolwork over the past couple of weeks, have been doing research on the side about things that they will debate at nationals. Uh, Sophie or Grace, do either of you want to mention how many pieces of legislation you've been uh, looking at and researching on and what it is you're going to speak about today or that you chose to speak about today? Um, so for today, we're doing the single one, like body cams, something I think we can all grasp on, especially now. Um, but overall for nationals, I think from my side in the Senate, we have about 12 preliminary bills about eight or nine semi-final bills, and then a handful of final bills. So overall, I'll probably be doing research over 22 something bills. Mm -hmm. I didn't yep. do the math there, but it's probably going to usually always averages around 20 something bills for big tournaments like this. And approximately how much time do you have to research it? Because if someone's hearing like, ooh, I'd have to do this for this weekend, that might scare them. But approximately how much time do you have to, to do that research? So for this year, um, uh, legislation was dropped on the 10th of May. And the first day of competing is on the 14th of June. So you have roughly over a month to compete, um, to prepare, meaning, the best case scenario to do is just one piece of legislation each day and by the time you're done with all of that research you'll still have enough time to give speeches uh, practice questioning leading up to the first day of competition and that's the best way to do it other than just scrambling because mm -hmm. that way you won't be prepared for everything we do have a quick question from an yeah. Oh, hey, this is Ilan. Yeah, so I guess, uh, you know, obviously, 
you know all the things that you said is what we are hoping to get out of this camp mm-hmm. uh, so i got a couple of questions maybe you'll address this so we also signed up for the other one uh, the the speech and then yes. the congress so for somebody like uh, you know our daughter has not been to any of these uh, debates before so which one do you recommend do you think the congress is a little bit more advanced than the uh, the speech the other camp or do you need to do both or just doing one is fine i know that's a couple of questions there um thinking about where to start um i you know we have it set up and designed um as middle school camp so that if someone is coming in knowing nothing about either activity we're going to help them move along and and learn quite a bit and be in a good spot um the speech one is going to focus a little bit less on writing and more about presenting if that makes sense um the congress one also focuses on writing just not quite as much cuz we're also dealing with uh, leadership skills and presenting to groups who are debating about things versus presenting to groups who are just listening to things uh, if that makes sense okay so do you recommend taking both or participating in both would complement each other and not necessarily um, one or the other you know they're both going to complement each other so if you do one you're going to get something out of it if you do both it's going to build on it and help so you know whatever works for you you time wise is uh fine with me but it's not set up to be an either or and it's not necessarily set up to be a both it it's set up so that if you do one and then another it's going to build on it um, cuz okay. no matter which one you're in even if you do one we want you to leave as a better speaker and a better presenter and much more confident and comfortable perfect thank you mhm mm-hmm. um sophie um grace has spoken a little bit do you want to tell uh the group just a little bit uh, you know you out of the uh 20 some odd pieces that you're researching you you picked this one because we don't have it in front of us could you tell us just a little bit what it is that the piece of legislation is proposing to do no no i do it yeah so uh this bill is titled a bill to enact mandatory body cameras for police officers Um so basically it's just trying to put small cameras small body cameras on all police officers while they're on duty um with the goal to be just increasing accountability for police and transparency so that we can know in some of these um like high intensity situations you know how are citizens acting how are police acting was there misconduct you know on whose behalf that sort of thing um So then there are a couple of things that go along with it. The bill talks about who's in charge, what department is in charge of implementing it. Um it talks about funding, how we're going to get that um and it talks about how this is going to be implemented on every police officer by the year 2021. Okay. Now um I don't know which one of you was going to speak first. Who has an aff- do you both have affirmative? Do you both have negative speeches? Do you have one of each or I have the off speech and I have a negation speech. Okay. Well, let's um whichever you you two have probably connected about this more. Whichever one of you wants to go first, usually it's aff, but I don't know if it's an authorship, so um yeah. I'll go off. It's not necessarily an authorship because those do have different structures. This mm-hmm. is more of a sponsorship speech. Um as in where I basically lay down reasons why we should have or why we should pass this bill. Um, yeah. Okay. So I just Yep. Go ahead. Oh, I'm going to say this first. Um just so that people know, typically a speech is no more than 3 minutes. So So let's let's see what you've kind of put together because it'll give people kind of a feel for what a what a speech will be like whether it's this topic or another. Let Go ahead Grace. Put my timer on.
for years. People in America have been seeing the ongoing tragedies of police brutality and high attention cases. But the question still remains of each and every single one of these cases. What actually happened during the altercation or the actual result, or the actual interaction between the police officer and a civilian? And one of the best ways you can actually find out and one of the best ways you can find the truth of what's happening is with implementing police body cams. So today, we are going, going to go over the reasons why police body cameras are beneficial and how they've been used in the current, in the current, in the past. And second, how police body cameras can actually be used to change training and change the way policing is do, done in the future. So first, we have to understand that police body cameras actually work and have led to accountability in places where they've been implemented. For that, we turn to the New York Times on October 20th, 2017, where in 2012, in Rilato, California, officers that were randomly assigned body cams actually had half the number of complaints in use of force incidents, such as using a police baton, tear gas, or a gun, or a taser, or a gun with civilians. And those who didn't actually had twice as more than those who did have body cams, which actually led to a decline of complaints by 90% the next year after implementation. So while we have a statistic and quote to show how body cameras have been acted, have been used in 2012, we can actually see and fast forward in time how body cameras have actually led to accountability in multitude of places. For that, we turn to the Atlantic in, uh, in September 2006 and 2018, which says after the aftermath of the 2014 shooting, um, shooting of Michael Browns, the Department of Justice actually investigated Ferguson Police Department and used their body camera footage to eventually find out that the law enforcement are using, are using tactics that actually generate revenue for the police department and not doing their duty to protect and serve in the first place. And next, next we also see in smaller studies elsewhere by the Huffington Post, we can see that police body cameras have actually led to exonerations of the police members who actually been falsely accused. So understand, in today's status quo, when we do have body cameras implemented, we are seeing a reduction in complaints, a reduction of use of force, and le which leads to more, which leads to more um, accountability. And if there is a accountability, and if there is a problem, we have something to go back to look to. But that's not the only reason we implement body cameras. The second reason as to why we're going to implement body cameras under today's bill is because Body cameras are actually being used for training and thus a changing in the policing status quo. We have to understand in today's, in today's society, we must change how policing is actually used, policing is actually being used. And what took Forbes in 2016, she, in California, they actually emphasize are using body camera footage to train new officers in a way to be more racially sensitive and a way to better figure out a way to this de-escalate de situations. So for these two reasons, for the fact that body cameras do work and they do lead to police do work and they do lead to police accountability, and the fact that they're being used to change the status quo policing is why we passed today's legislation. Thank you, Grace. Uh, appreciate your time and help. Normally, there would be like an interactive questioning time. Um, we're going to skip that just so we can see another example of a speech. Um, so Sophie would be next if you want to unmute and go for it. There we go. High intensity interactions between police and citizens have been a problem in our country for too long. We can no longer stand by as police use unnecessary force against our vulnerable citizens and we struggle immensely with accountability and transparency. Representatives, while this issue needs to be addressed, Today's bill is not a workable solution for this problem. I stand in negation for two key reasons. First, body cameras are not necessarily going to bring major improvement. And second, the implementation of this bill is problematic. First, while body cameras have been touted as an amazing solution to problems with police misconduct and false accusations, as Representative Batuli brought up in her speech, they haven't been shown to live up to these claims. A study published by George Mason University Center for Evidence-Based Crime Policy in March of 2019, considered one of the largest studies on body cameras, found that body cameras have not had statistically significant effects on most measures of officer and citizen behavior or citizens' views of police, and found mixed results on body cameras leading 
to reductions in use of force by police. It would be irresponsible for this Congress to pass this bill and invest time and money into implementing body cameras all over the country when we don't have enough research to support them. We need to find a solution that will actually ensure that our constituents and police will be safe rather than pass a bill that will likely not solve the very issues we want it to. Second, even if the body cameras could bring some good impacts, there are large issues with the implementation of this bill. Let's understand that body cameras are already quite prevalent in the US. A Bureau of Justice Statistics survey report from 2018 found that nearly half of US law enforcement agencies had body worn cameras and about a third of departments that didn't have cameras said they were likely to consider acquiring them within the year. This means a couple things. First, departments are already deciding for themselves whether or not body cameras are something worse in, worth investing in. Second, departments that have implemented body cameras have created policies for how and when body cameras should be used, who is using them, and more. This bill could potentially mess up what departments are already doing by us stepping in. We can look to the International Association of Chiefs of Police for further insight. They support body-worn cameras generally, but take the stance that each agency knows how to craft policy best for its community, according to a Pew article published in January of this year. Representatives, we should not pass and implement this bill because it may have extremely harmful effects on police departments and constituents by heavily interfering with some of the benefits police departments have seen when they are left to properly implement their own programs. Stand with me in negation because we need to let departments look into their own solutions rather than step in and mandate a likely ineffective program. Thank you, Sophie. Thank you, Grace. I'm wondering, I promised you that we'd be done by about 11 and it's just about them. I'm wondering if you'd be willing to stay on for a moment or two in case any of the students who are watching have questions. Um, you actually do it. It's been a while since I or Rebecca has, has done congressional debate. So is there any questions from anyone uh, for Grace or Sophie, any of the students? Hi, this is Amy. I have a quick question. Go ahead, Amy. I was wondering how the legislation gets written. Do the students write their own legislation or do they find legislation that's pending? How do they decide what they're going to debate? Should I take that question? Go ahead, yeah. Yeah, so that's kind of a mixture of kind of both. When we do run our own legislation, sometimes it's just ideas that we have about certain policies um, or things that we would like to see implemented as students. Um, or sometimes we do go and look and see what's pending in Congress right now. So there's a free range of what you can do. So for example, we can take something that a current presidential candidate has as their plan make a couple edits to it and then have that be as our legislation, but also we can make something about infrastructure that's completely out of um, the current realm of politics and talking and have that be our own legislation. So it's really up to the student to decide what they want to do. Usually legislation's backed up with like research and some background before you write it, but it's literally up to the student to decide what they want to do, like I said. Thank you, Grace. D uh, does anyone else have a question for Grace or Sophie about speaking or legislation or what Congress is like or anything that you're curious about? Any of the students who are new to this? Oh, hey, how long um, each student gets to prepare? Like uh, you give a topic and then you research on it for a week and then you come back and do it, or how does it work? Yeah, so I know there's a couple of people from different states here, um, but in the state of Minnesota, typically from what I've experienced, you get a like one week notice of what to prepare. So you'll get the, le the docket, which is all the legislation, or the packet, which is all the legislation, that you could potentially be debating for a tournament, usually a week 
like a school week or a couple days before the tournament for local tournaments in Minnesota, we never have more than like eight to 10 pieces of legislation and we split it up so it's evenly, so the work is evenly done and much more manageable that way. But you usually have a couple of days to get it done. Um, it's always been enough time. I think it's probably around like five to seven. So like a school week to a full week of time to prepare for tournaments. Good question, thank you. Any other questions for Grace or Sophie? We'll, we'll, we'll take, uh, wait a moment or so. I know sometimes people wait because they don't want to talk over people, but uh, if there's any other questions, I, I think they'd be happy to answer. If not, we'll let them back to their Saturday and prepping, so. All right. Well, if we oh, do, we do oh. have somebody who is okay. asking a question. Go ahead. Um, how many people would you present? I didn't hear that. How many people would you present in front of? Um, that depends. Um, <laughs> that depends mostly on the size of the tournament. Uh, most chambers are around. 12 to 15 people that you will be giving your speech to and debating in front of. Um, and then you usually have a parliamentarian and then a judge or two in the back. So um, that's roughly the people who are going to see compete. If it's a smaller tournament, of course, you're going to see um, a smaller, bigger tournament, you're going to see fluctuations in that number. But I know they like to keep it around 12 to 15, 18 generally under 20 as we really want to keep it under 20 or else it just gets too hard for everyone to speak on everything and it gets really bad um but most tournaments i've seen on a local level or even at a national level the chamber is always 12 to 15 sometimes 18. if it's really crowded you might go over to 20. hey this is ilan i got one more um so how do you move up the, the different levels, um, like from the, I, I hear like state level, national level, so do you participate at the local city level and then you get selected to go to the next or uh, how does that work? Um, I think Ross, you could also like jump into this too, because that's also from like just a team management standpoint. Yeah. Um, so talking in Minnesota, there's a bunch of local inventationals which anyone can register to join. Um, it's literally open to everyone, but then those are like local level tournaments. So like schools within my school district or near the metro area in Minnesota um, or where you are. And then the state level will be tournaments such as like sections and state, which are you have to, you meet a certain qualifications to meet to the next level. And at the national level, there are national circuit tournaments, meaning everyone from around the country are, is coming into this tournament. Usually those are at big places such as um, like Harvard, um, big known colleges are in well reputable places such as Glenbrooks, which is a national level circuit tournament at a reputable, like well-known school that for uh, speech and debate or in Minnesota, a circuit tournament would be the Minneapolis at Apple Valley and the Blake tournament in Minneapolis at the Blake School. Again, those are circuit tournaments because they draw in a lot of people from other states, which is something you don't really see on the local level. And they usually have some recognition or clout attached to them. And then the really next level is the national level, which you can only get to after competing like the national national level at like nationals, which you can only get to to compete after you qualify at the national qualifier. Um, and then after you qualify at the national qualifier, then you advance onto the national level at the national tournament. Uh -huh. Yep, yep, that's, that's, you know, invitationals, anyone can go to for our section and qualifying tournaments, the national qualifying tournament. 
um, schools are limited in how many they can send. So the coaches usually pick who their best are. And then the only way you can get to state is if you win at the section tournament. And the only way you can go to nationals is if you win at the, the qualifying tournament. So, so that's kind of how that's is structured. There are tournaments at big colleges like Grace mentioned. Uh, usually they have a a limit on how many every school can send so that no school sends 20 or 30. Usually uh, it's a multiple of a judge multiple like six entries or 12 entries, but but that's kind of that. Good question. Are there are there any other questions for Sophie or Grace or? Do you see any Rebecca or? I don't see anyone raising their hand. All righty. Well, if that's the case, Grace, Sophie, thanks so much for being here and for giving us some samples of real life stuff of what you're working on for nationals. Keep up the good work and I'll connect with you later. Thank you. Good luck. Bye. All righty. Um, let's skip ahead a couple of slides, Rebecca, if we could. We also have like a video of a sample, but you, you kind of got if you've got the feel, you've got the feel. So here is, we have a little bit of a speaking activity for every student who's watching. We're going to give you a little bit of, of time. We're gonna try come up with a topic that we can all practice interacting with, if that makes sense. So you kind of get a feel for the format. And we're not worried about time, we're not worried about anything. In fact, if you can kind of come up with a fun, silly topic, like which is the best video game or which is the best uh, style of pizza, Anything that you want is fine, but come up with a topic that we should debate and have like three reasons why we should as a group debate it. So we're gonna interact some, we're going to speak a little bit so you kind of get the, the feel for that on camera. So if you're a parent who's watching, you are more than welcome to do this as well. But if you're a student, let's say, uh, because this is just a brainstorm thing, let's take about two moments, two minutes and uh, come up with an idea. And then we will, uh, I'm just going to go down the list in about two minutes and ask people to share uh, what their idea is. And we'll kind of interact with it, debate it a little bit, let you question each other, and then wrap up the day. So your time is starting uh, now. Go ahead, take a couple of minutes. If you want to chat something to me, feel free to do that, but two minutes to go. A little under a minute left. In about 12 seconds. Alrighty, that's been a couple of minutes. 
And again, this should be fun, a good way to interact. It'll kind of give us a feel of, of what it's like when we're giving speeches and interacting with uh, a camp. If you would be willing to turn on your camera so I can see who the students are. Is there anyone who wants to volunteer to go first? If not, I'll just kind of pick. This is looking good. All right, now in the order that I see it, Simon, right now you're at the top of my screen. Would you be willing to tell us your topic and three reasons why it would be a good one? Um, I guess the debate of which pet is better, cats or dogs? Cats or dogs? And why would that be a good debate? What are, what are a couple reasons for us? Well, it's a topic that people talk about a lot and there's a lot of disagreement on it. Excellent. And it's something fun and there's some good research that you can do about it. I like it. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, Leonidas, you're next on the screen. Let's hear what your topic is. Um, which is better, very ripe mushy bananas or normal ripe bananas? That's bananas. Very cool. Let's hear the reasons why that would be a good topic. Uh, I like bananas. Bananas taste good. I've been eating bananas my whole life. Okay. <laughs> um, that, that's good. Good reason. Uh, D. Chen. I forget who the student was behind that or if that's a parent. That may have been apparent. Um, Sarah. I don't have one. Okay, hang tight. If one comes to you, we'll, we might try. Um, James, you're the next person as I scroll down. I don't have one. All righty. Uh, Manakshi. Uh, yeah, I think this is a parent. I got a okay. little bit more serious one though. Uh, <laughs> I'll so. write it down. They can vote on it if they want. I don't know, I can follow that after the bananas, so that's going to be hard <laughs> to do. Um, I guess uh, should we, uh, you know, reopen the state sooner? Uh, you know, I know some states are still uh, kind of having the restrictions and, you know, uh, after the corona, uh, the COVID situation. So obviously I chose that topic because it is a current situation and everybody is going through with it. And obviously there is a lot to debate and research. Very true. Very true. Thank you. Let's good. Good job. Let's go to Janie. I forget who was. Was that a student or a parent as well? Um. There we go. Um. Uh. If summer break should be all year round or just one summer break? Summer. I am ready for summer break. <laughs> I think a lot of people are. And Preeti, uh, do you have a topic? I don't know if your student's with you or... I'm Sorry, thinking. let's do first. Um, I don't have a topic. Okay. okay. You're not on YouTube. Okay. That, okay, all good. So we have four topics. And we're gonna do this just by a majority vote because that's how we vote when we're in student Congress. So we had a cats versus dogs topic. If you would be willing to uh, raise your hand if you're for it and give Rebecca and I a couple of moments to count. Um, so if you would like to practice debating cats versus dogs, would you raise your hand? Okay, if you want to debate bananas, would you raise a hand? Alrighty, good, good, good. Uh, if you want to debate opening up the state, reopening the state, would you raise a hand? Raise a 
I got to raise hand for myself. So. <laughs> <laughs> got that. All right. And then if you think summer break should be year round or just one time a year, would you raise a hand? All right, is there anyone who did or didn't vote on anything that wants to, the last chance to get your voice heard? Yes. Uh, nothing, I don't know. Just, I don't know, I don't, pick one then, quick. Okay, fine, cats versus dogs, I don't know. Cats versus dogs, okay. Uh, Rebecca, did anyone raise their hand digitally? I wrote down what I saw. So I saw digital hand raises, I had, Three digital hand raises for cats versus dogs. Okay. One for the banana topic. Okay. Uh, one for the summer break topic. And then two for reopening versus keeping uh, stay at home. Okay. If I add those votes with the votes that I saw by hand, it seems like we have a cats versus dogs winner. So why don't we do this? Usually the person who comes up with the topic gets to speak first, whoever authors it. So um, Simon, why don't you, if you're willing, share with us what you believe is better, cats or dogs? Um, I think that cats are better than dogs um, because cats are a lot less maintenance and they're a lot easier to have around the house. Um, while dogs, you have to do more things with them, go them for walks, uh, give them food. Well, you have to do it for cats as well. But they're just more maintenance because, and they're a lot harder to like, get them to like poop in the right place. Because in cat, when I, I have two cats, they can just go to the litter box and they don't have, and we don't have to go outside to let them poop. <laughs> and also their cats are a lot more fun to be around, I believe because they're all nice and they like curl up with you. And dogs are a lot louder and a lot bigger and they're a lot harder to be around. All right, good job, good job. Now in a debate, everyone gets to present their side of things. And usually for the sake of clarification, we let people question each other. So is there anyone who is listening who has a question for Simon? If so, because you're on multiple screens for me, why don't you just ask, say, hey, my name is Ross or whatever your name is, and I have a question for Simon. Anyone have a question for Simon? <laughs> All right, and sometimes there are no questions. That's okay too. And in debate, we always wanna be fair. We always wanna give two sides to things. So is there someone who thinks dogs are better than cats? Uh, if so, it's your turn to speak and you can share why you believe dogs are better than cats. Any dog lovers out there? Let's hear it from the dog lovers. Okay, sometimes this happens in Congress where we don't have the other side right away, but we know that everyone has a voice and that everyone deserves to be able to speak. So if there's no one who wants to speak on dogs right now, is there someone else who wants to speak on cats, why they think cats are better? Let's hear about cats. Simon, you're going to win this debate. You're the only one <laughs> who's got a voice. Go cat. <laughs> Meow. Let's hear it, sir. I see your, your hand, uh, Mr. Chen. I still think, I think cats are better than dogs. Well, they like to nap around 
Uh, pets have to nap around a lot, so you don't really have to. And they're really independent, so they can go out hunt for hunt for stuff and then come back and do. You really don't have to do much stuff with them, but they're still fun to like do stuff with. The only downside of having a cat it really is uh, lots of people are allergic to cats, including me. Good point. Good job. Um, it's not like more people are allergic to cats than dogs. Look at I that. Jump right into questioning. Natural debaters. I love it. <laughs> yeah, it's not more. It's a lot. Is there anyone else who has a, a question? Okay. We're going to give the dog lovers one more opportunity because we, in debate, we always want to be fair and we want both sides to have a voice. So is there anyone who wants to speak about dogs? You know, I was getting the kids talk, but I cannot stand back and let the cats win. <laughs> I'm a dog person. This is, yeah. I, you know, as a parent, I don't want to be part of this uh, kids uh, discussion, but still, we got to have representation for the dogs. So. Everyone's welcome. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I think if you, number one, my counter argument is, you know, the whole point of pet is so you get to interact with them. If you think the cats are independent, then why have a pet? So you want some animal that you want to take care of, you want to play with them, and all of that. So no, you can that play. dogs are What's pretty fun more? to play with, and you can train them, and uh, you can take them out for a walk. I don't think you can do that with a cat, and uh, it helps you with your lifestyle, and uh, definitely dogs are better and cooler. While you are right that cats are independent, um, even if they are sometimes, you can still hang out with them and they can still not be. The problem with um, dogs being so friendly is that sometimes it could be over the top and sometimes it can get a little annoying. I call it love. So. <laughs> <laughs> this is really good to be able to debate, to debate um, without knowing the topic uh, off the spur. We have just a few minutes left in the time that we slotted. This should kind of give you a feel for this. So during camp, you're going to learn how to prepare for topics. You're going to learn how to research them, how to write speeches, how to practice speeches, um, how to interact with groups so that uh, everyone's voice has a fair and equal opportunity to be heard. And uh, additionally, we'll have a lot of fun as we do it. We want to take a little bit of time at the end. If anyone has any questions, they are more than welcome to ask. Sometimes people have questions and they don't want to ask in front of the group. So I've put my email there. If you want to write it down or copy paste it off your screen, that's totally fine. Also, this is being recorded. So uh, we can send it out to you if you want to watch it again or have any questions. But hopefully you kind of have a, a bit of a thought of like, uh, what camp will include, what we're working towards, and what we would do. So with, if you have questions, feel free to ask. If you don't, you feel like you have a good taste of what it'll be like, you're welcome to uh, sign off. Um, so thanks for being here. Thanks for taking time. I hope you have a good rest of your day, and I look forward to seeing you in camp. And I'll, I'm going to hang out here uh, for anyone who has any questions. Hey, one, one final question. How do we access the recording? Yep. It will be sent out in an email after this session, along okay. with Ross's contact information. Okay. Maybe not right after this session. It might be a little bit later uh, in the day, because we have another session that we're going to do in just okay. a bit for a different camp. But we'll send it out today. So. Okay. Perfect. And now, did I win that debate? <laughs> well, this is, this is a great time to vote, everyone. So at the end of every debate, um, a judge is going to vote. Uh, who, how they thought everyone did, but the students all, always get to, to vote on who they, which side wins. So if you think cats are better than dogs, why don't you raise your hand either in person or digitally and keep it up. I'm going to scroll through and count the hands that I see and Rebecca will count the digital hands. All right. Hi Ross, I have another question for you. So for kids who want to know, I mean, like my son is the 